Hey everyone! So I hope you liked that video that I posted last night. Um, that was the Secret Nail Project. <laughs> what a funny name, huh? Um, but I thought, wow, if somebody comes across that video accidentally, they're going to be like, ooh, the Secret Project, I wonder what that is. <laughs> Well, I had originally planned on releasing that video like one or two weeks from now, but I was so excited about it that I couldn't wait and I had, I only had two photographs uploaded for it and then last night I just went wild and changed my polish a million times and took pictures and I just didn't want to stop until it was done and the video was up because, oh my god, that was so much fun. So I hope you guys like that because I'm going to do one of those every week. Um, that's why it said Secret Nail Project Week 1. So I'm going to post one once a week and just show you um, some of the polishes that I have in my collection. Anyway, okay, so today is Tips and Tricks and I'm going to show you um, one tip and three tricks. Something like that. <laughs> okay, so anyways, um, yeah, somebody had either written to me, private messaged me, or left me a message in the comment section or something, and they were asking me if I knew about that trick where when you buy a new MAC makeup brush, take some clear fingernail polish and put it over the number, and then you won't lose the number. So I was like, yeah, I know about that, but the problem is uh, by the time I found out about that trick, I my numbers had already worn off my brushes so um, I started thinking about that and I was like you know what there's got to be a solution to how you can fix that once the number has worn off so I put my thinking cap on and I came up with a solution to that problem and um, I've tested it out to make sure that it was going to be okay before I pass it along to you, and it is. And what that is is, um, okay, let's just take, let's take um, an example here. So this is a MAC 129 brush, and the solution is get yourself a silver Sharpie and just write the number on the handle. And I've washed the brushes and even after they get washed it still seems to stay on and if you um, you know think about where you're going to be putting your fingers because it may wear off over time so you want to put the number like right below where you're going to be putting your fingers but not so low that it's going to be as exposed um, to the water and shampoo and whatnot when you're brushing it uh, cleaning it <laughs> Um, so you want to try to get it like right in the middle. So put it right above where the number usually is. And if over time um, it does wear off, which I think it would probably take a long time because these are permanent markers, um, you can always just write it on there again, right? So not a problem. And just in case you're thinking what I was thinking, I thought to myself, oh well, if I write on there with a Sharpie, if I really want to keep it on there, I can take some clear polish and put it over the Sharpie number. No, don't do that. <laughs> and the reason why I'm saying that is um, the Sharpie is made out of chemicals, the nail polish is made out of chemicals, and when you combine the two together, here's what you get. A big blurry mess. So don't do that. Just write it on there with the Sharpie don't put finger in the clear fingernail polish over the Sharpie because it's just going to blur it out. So that is one trick or tip or whatever um, that is a solution for what happens when the numbers wear off your MAC brushes. Now another thing you can do with a Silva Sharpie is if you have uh, Barry M. Dazzle Dust you can write the name on the cover because the, all they put on there is the number on the bottom. They don't tell you the color name. And I like to know the color names. And there's no way I can memorize all these because I have quite a few of them. So just write the name on the cover. And then you'll have that. Also, if you have um, Bare Minerals eyeshadows, 
same thing. I wrote the name, which is Cupcake, and then I wrote like the type of eyeshadow it is, which was a glimpse. Bam Minerals has uh, changed like the coding and names and categories for their products over the years, so uh, what things used to be and what they are now are not necessarily going to be the same categories. But anyways, yeah, you can use your trusty old silver Sharpie on um, those nice black covers are very easy to write on with a silver Sharpie. Now, um, another thing that I want to pass along, this isn't a trick so much as it is a tip. If you are like me, you have items in your makeup collection that are drugstore and department store. Most people that are really, really into makeup have a mixture because they want to try a lot of different things so they have things in all price ranges. And I personally can't afford to buy lots and lots of expensive things, so I just have a few expensive things. And I always had a tendency to not use them and push them aside because I paid a lot of money for them and I don't want to use them up. So I wanted to make sure that they were going to last. Well, the problem with that is makeup does not last forever. And if you hang on to it for too long, by the time you go to use it, it's not going to be any good. Case in point, um, I have a drawer full of foundations, all different price ranges. And I went to grab one of them one day, and I opened it up, and it was like, ooh, what's that smell? And I realized that it had gone bad. So now, um, I can't use it. It was one of my MAC foundations, and I'm going to have to back to MAC it, because it went bad. It was about a year and a half old, and foundations are not meant to last that long. After about a year... Um, it's going to start to deteriorate and turn and, you know, you may be able to squeeze two years out of it, but not much more than that. So, my tip is, use your expensive makeup. Don't save it for special occasions, especially something like a foundation. Um, right now, I had gotten a sample of the Chanel Vita Lumiere Aqua Foundation. Absolutely love it and have to talk myself talk myself out of going to the store every day and buying it because I really want it and I like it and it would be the perfect foundation for summer but I have a whole bunch of foundations that I need to use and I'm gonna try to use use up as many as I can before I buy the Chanel one um, I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to hold out but you know, we'll see what I can do. And I'm starting with the ones that I paid the most money for. So that is my advice on that, is use your good stuff, don't save it, unless you have something that you really, really prefer over your expensive items. And I'll talk more about that when I get to what I'm wearing today. I have some perfect examples of what I'm talking about. Okay, so speaking of what I'm wearing, my shirt is from Forever 21, as is my ring. My necklace is from, my mom bought this for me at the gift shop at Plymouth Plantation in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Um, okay, so that's it for clothes and jewelry. And for makeup, I'm wearing MAC Prep and Prime Primer, Makeup Forever HD Foundation. Is this my favorite foundation? No. Did I pay a lot for it? Yes. Am I going to use it every day until it's gone? Yes. <laughs> um, so, and then I'm going to move on to something like Nars Sheer Glow, you know? <laughs> I want to use, I want to get my money's worth. I don't like to waste money. So, why should I grab, you know, my Maybelline Fit Me foundation or my CoverGirl True Blend or whatever, you know? Let's use the expensive stuff first. <laughs> um, however, here's an example of how I actually prefer this over my more expensive things. This is my Essence Forget It Concealer Palette. I use the peach colored one to counteract the dark circles under my eyes and it works really well. So I'm not going to use a more expensive concealer that I have because this does the job better than anything else. So that is an example of 
a case where if something really works, I'm going to use that rather than the expensive thing. Ico Cream. I've been using this as a highlight. I do have this on as a highlight today on my face, on my eyes, under the brow bone, in the inner corner. I love this stuff. Um, I would consider this to be mid-range. I don't consider this to be drugstore or cheap. As far as I know, you can't buy it at drugstores. And it's not, but then again, it's not high, high range either. It's not available at department stores. I'm not sure where in the UK that you guys buy this, the, those of you that live there. I had to buy it from the website because I don't have this in my country. But this is mid-range. It, it does the job. I absolutely love it. Um, I don't think that, you know, I'm going to need to buy many more highlighters. And it's a big, little tiny dab will do ya. And look at all the product that's in there. That's going to last me forever. But it's a cream. So I want to use it, you know, all the time because it does the job and I paid a little more for it than I probably would for a highlight, you know, in this country. For powder today, I'm wearing MAC Truth and Light, um, what do you call this stuff, Magically Cool Liquid Powder. Um, the stuff is weird and, but yet, I think I like it. Um... I don't know, it really takes some getting used to because it feels so strange to have a powder going on your face that's also wet at the same time. I mean, you'd have to try it to know what I'm talking about, but the end result looks like a regular powder. For my blush today, I'm using MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in Petticoat. Um, that's Mineralized Skin Finishes. Um, aside from the natural ones, but just the regular mineralized skin finishes, you can use as a blush or a highlight or both or whatever you want. My eye primer today is Urban Decay Primer Potion for um, eyeshadows. I've got on Barry M Baby Blue on the lids and the other one that I put in the crease seems to have disappeared. I put it back. I have this little basket. Well, I'll show you. I have this basket full of barium dazzle dust and I threw the other one back in the basket for some reason. I don't know why. So I don't know what I have in the crease. <laughs> uh, I'm right now, I'm just fascinated with these dazzle dust. Do I have other eyeshadows that are more expensive that I like better? Uh, I wouldn't say better. I would say equally. I really like these, um, but I love my MAC eyeshadows too. And some other things that I have. But this is just what I'm fascinated with right now. Um, eyeliner. Oh god, what did I do with the eyeliner? Here it is. It's the MAC Pearl Glide Intense Eyeliner in Petrol Blue. This was limited edition. Mascara. I'm using this today because I pay a lot of money for it. It's the YSL Singulier Mascara. No, don't buy this. <laughs> this is this was a wicked waste of money, but um, I paid a lot for it, so I'm going to use it. But it, I'm probably going to have to throw it out soon because it's starting to dry out. But I've heard that the YSL Fossil is actually very good, but I don't like, which I have not ever tried, but I just heard that it was good. But the Singulier, no, was not, not a good idea. <laughs> um, let's see. Lip products. I am wearing MAC Everhip Lipstick. And I bought this when it came out with the Liberty of London collection. It's just a really pretty peach. And it's just one of those lipsticks that you just put it on and it's so easy to apply. Probably looks good on everyone. Peach looks good on everybody, right? Nail polish. This is a good example of what I'm talking about. You know, if you've paid a lot of money for it and you've got it, use it. Chanel Black Pearl. Um, I don't have that many expensive nail polishes. I mean, really expensive nail polishes like this. 20-something dollars. Um, so, I'm going to wear it. I'm not going to save it for my birthday or Christmas or vacation or whatever. I'm going to wear it. <laughs> um, so that's that. 
And uh, yeah, that's it then, I guess. Hope you enjoyed my tips and tricks, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.